I'd like now to introduce our next speaker, Mark Carroll from the Police Association. Mark Carroll, APM, has been president of the Police Association of SA since 2008 and president of the Police Federation of Australia since 2014. He is passionately committed to education, awareness and the eradication of stigma that has led to the development and implementation of a compelling national mental health program for police officers and their families. Mark couldn't be with us today, so here is his video presentation on taking care of police mental health in Australia. Hello everyone. My apologies for not being with you in person today. I trust you get as much out of the conference as I did two years ago. I'm delighted to be here and to make a small contribution to what are clearly critical issues. For almost three years now, the Police Federation of Australia has been working on mental health strategies for police officers and their families. Among those officers and their families, there exists a desperate need for education and awareness building, the eradication of stigma, knowledge that there is help and that it does work, and understanding that the sooner you put your hand up for help, the sooner you'll get better, and people to know where the pathways for help are. The job of keeping our community safe can carry very significant psychological costs for the people involved and their families. Among those costs are mental ill health, psychological injuries, and in the worst cases, suicide. We keep stressing families because they have an equally heavy price to pay. Last year's Beyond Blue study of first responders showed that suicidal thoughts are twice as common among police officers than they are in the general population. Worryingly, police and other emergency services workers are three times more likely to have some sort of suicide plan. The academic research is frightening and we know there are far too many police officers, men and women, who are sitting home in the middle of the day with their blinds drawn watching TV, bearing the psychological scars that come with their service to their communities. So what do we do about it? Well, I can tell you what we don't do about it. We don't lecture. We don't subject people to death by PowerPoint. We tell them a story, and we tell them a story in the context of popular culture. The successful leaders we've had have told us stories, stories about where we've come from, where we're going, and why. If you want me to change something I do or, or change something I believe in, then tell me a story. The Police Federation of Australia understood that the best intention efforts of police departments and departmental psychologists weren't improving matters. In some instances, departmental and or bureaucratic interventions made things worse. It's not our intention to diminish these important efforts, but the PFA is able to tell it like it really is. We're not restrained by bureaucracies and departments speak. We're pretty confident that no one who sees our material including and especially the telemovie Dark Blue, will come away unmoved. And that's what we set out to achieve. But it was done to a brief. So the brief we gave ourselves was to produce a suite of compelling, persuasive, no holds barred education and awareness materials for police officers and their families with specific objectives. And they were to build understanding and awareness. Police officers and their families have to know what to look for. And they have to know where to go when they see it. They have to be able to recognise the early signs and symptoms. Because what we do know for sure is this, the sooner an emerging mental health problem for a psychological injury is recognised, the sooner professional help is sought, the sooner that police officer gets better and gets back to work, and the less damage is done to the family. We have to eradicate stigma. There is no shame in a knee injury chasing a bad guy at night. Equally, there is no shame in a psychological injury. We have to understand it's not a case of one size fits all. Two cops can attend the same event. One might get a psychological injury, one might not. And if you do suffer a stress reaction, it's very natural. It doesn't mean you're soft, it just means you're human. A lot of discussion and thought and research and a commitment to the power of the story, we decided to produce specific materials. A suite of workplace posters. A police-specific handbook built around police terminology and images. A larger, more detailed booklet called A Cop in the Family. A song and a video clip and a telemovie. And a number of other video resources including an amazing three-hour conversation with cops from all around Australia sharing their stories around a campfire in the Adelaide Hills. Certainly the film Dark Blue and indeed the song Graduation Day carry important messages for police officers and their families. But these messages are also aimed at departmental managers, bureaucrats, politicians and the general public. All Australians huddle under the umbrella of safety and protection held aloft by our policemen and policewomen. That safety and protection comes at a cost, and all of us who are not police officers have an obligation to look fairly and squarely at those costs, understand them, 
and to ensure that our elected representatives and the managers and bureaucrats who implement policy do the right thing all the time, every time. Without a doubt, nothing like dark blue has ever been undertaken in Australia before. We were fortunate to have the guidance of Dr Nick Ford, a very experienced and highly regarded psychiatrist who, in Adelaide, is trusted and much loved by the police officers he has helped back to health. We were very fortunate to have selected film production company Piper Films from South Australia. Technically and creatively, they are among the best in the country. We were also very lucky to have the unstinting support of South Australia Police Commissioner Grant Stevens. We had access to absolutely everything we needed. I joined the force at about the same time Grant did. There's nothing you can do, sweetie. It's Grant. Coffee? No. Should we be trusting him with a loaded weapon? He's uh, been a bit an edge lately. Shut your mouth or I'm trying to get this under control here. Don't talk to me. You're you're right. Right. I now need you to come back to the police Mate, station. Mate, fucking jacket. You're wearing a jacket. You're a risk, Grant. You're a risk to yourself and everyone around you. It was dark, mate. Anyone could have made the same mistake. It's what I wrote in my report. Grant! They never said it would be like this. As I've said many times, our material is pretty confronting, but while many cops have admitted to being pretty tense and apprehensive during the screening, all of them stayed, all of them thanked us, and all of them said the story was one that had to be told, and told in this realistic way. I did a radio interview the other day and made the point that realigning mental health and psychological injuries and workplace health and safety in Australia's police forces will not happen overnight. It took Australia more than 40 years to turn itself into a country in which most of us don't smoke. And that took a major cultural shift. It's the same for mental health. We're not going to fix things with a telly movie, a song, a website, some posters and some booklets, because it's a long journey. But Dark Blue, Graduation Day, and the rest of the material we've developed are simply the first important steps on what will be that long journey. Thanks for listening. And you can view the telly movie and associated materials at pfa.org.au. Thank you. Way up on the ridge, down past the feet, feet under the bridge, out of the darkness into the light, with the red and the blues on a hot march.